it's time to start a rebellion. There is an overgrown parasite that has slowly been infecting you for the past 24 years, and if you happen to be younger than that, then it may have been for your entire life. It's been carefully feeding off of your free will each and every day right before your very eyes, and its only goal is infinite guaranteed growth no matter what cost. And guess what? It is an AI. That's just the current distraction meta, pun intended. So what could it be? Well, you guessed right. It's social media. And it's the best and worst thing that could have happened to all forms of artists here in the 21st century. So in this video, I want to address the incredible pain and suffering that most of us have quietly been putting up with for years. I myself have experienced a lot of catalytic pain since the COVID pandemic changed the world starting in 2020. Honestly, I also just want to empathize with you and help you realize that you aren't alone here, especially if any of this resonates with you so far. My goal here is to encourage you to take informed action towards feeling balanced, fulfilled, and excited about life and making artwork again. It's time to rebel against the hidden pressures of social media and commercialism and reclaim our creative autonomy. So here's the problem. Social media platforms have heavily prioritized engagement metrics over artistic merit, which has led to the rampant devaluation of our hard work across the board. It especially doesn't help when we've already been told that art is a waste of time since childhood. And almost everyone makes art as a kid, right? But almost everyone stops by their teenage years. And yet, we're surrounded by art each and every second of our lives, and most people don't even recognize it and end up taking it for granted. As I've been working on my own mental health, I've realized that it's a perfect mirror for your typical narcissistic or codependent relationship. Now, mental health topics and words like narcissism and codependency have become super popular buzzwords lately, but I want to focus more on the traits here rather than just the labels. For example, there is an all too familiar cycle of love bombing and discard that we experience sharing our artwork online. So let's say you start a new account on Instagram, for example. You hear that video content is much more popular right now, so you go ahead and post a new reel, you get lots of likes, and suddenly you get a notification that Instagram says that you're about to get a payout of a hundred bucks. I myself was super hyped when I saw this for the first time. Later on, You'll eventually get caught up into the algorithm and keep pumping out that same thing to chase that high forever and ever, right? And this is not exclusive to video. This was happening with images too. It's that classic carrot and stick, baby. At the risk of sounding even more like I've spent the last 10 years in a dark room somewhere posting on r slash anti-work, it's no difference from becoming a wage slave, regardless of how much money you might actually make from it or not. But wait, there's more. Remember that 100 bucks I mentioned? Yeah, that was just an incentive to make you work harder. You know, you see, you're going to need about 10 times that same amount of views to get another 100 bucks. And uh, by the way, you only have 30 days to do it. So yeah, go ahead and get to work. Now, I want to mention that I have a, a love-hate relationship with Instagram, but it isn't the only culprit here. So Twitch, for example. They've been promoting a new ad functionality that gives you seemingly random amounts of cash for putting even more ads into their already ad-filled streams, which just destroys your viewer experience. And it's not even that much money, to be honest. So at this point, let me ask you a question. And I really want you to take a moment to think about it. Do you think that you have free will? Are you truly in control of your own creativity or... Have you surrendered your personal sovereignty and voice to appease what attention optimization algorithms want? Now, to be fair, I have seen great improvement here on YouTube with how they're improving the algorithm to show you new ideas from new creators that are up and coming, but I'm not going to sit back and just accept that. This is just one of many. What is actually happening here is that you end up subconsciously prioritizing fitting in rather than embracing self-discovery and it causes you to eventually doubt your own value and forget who you even are. It's just never going to be enough because how can you possibly fit in somewhere if you don't even know your own identity? So this is where that codependent bit I mentioned earlier comes in, and you just end up constantly changing yourself and your artwork, which equates to jumping into an infinite hole of dissatisfaction and painful feelings of betrayal and abandonment. Your own personal identity 
is the most valuable thing that you have to share as an artist. Now, I want to make this clear early on in the video. I do not want you to think that I am some special exception to this because I have a big platform. If anything, I'm even more affected by it. I've spent my entire life trying to fit in everywhere I could in vain just because I didn't have a clue of who I really was. And to be honest, I wasn't even willing to find out. I hated that painful feeling of abandonment so much that doing my own thing just wasn't an option. So I abandoned myself each and every day and I still struggle with it. Even here on YouTube, I lost my way for three years straight trying to play catch up. I was trying my best to be like similar artists that were doing better than me on YouTube, Instagram, and Twitch. You can actually go through my channel yourself and you can see that gradual shift from when I had that beautifully naive confidence in what I was doing. Then, slowly, I became extremely self-conscious with what people thought of me and my artwork as the numbers and subscriber count grew. COVID gave me a false sense of achievement when everyone started spending more time online and getting into art. That completely shattered when the quarantines were lifted and people stopped watching YouTube as much. They wanted to go outside and moved on to different interests. Sure, there was inevitably going to be a natural decline once people started going out again, right? But surprisingly enough, my views declined even faster because I lost touch with my own audience, which means I lost touch with myself. I just didn't want to accept the fact that I was hurting big time, so I ended up projecting it all onto my audience. I flip-flopped between convincing myself that they were selfish and didn't care, to experiencing nearly psychotic highs of feeling like I was the best and had everything under control. And as painful as it was, I still don't regret any of it because I learned a lot of cool things about art in general. I also learned how to build a much firmer foundation of who I am internally and what I want my artistic brand to be. I put these new skills into my artwork and made my first masterpiece. One. We are one. I revamped my website and created a Procreate course that I am pouring my absolute heart and soul into every day. By the way, if you're interested in learning more about what I've learned, then hit the subscribe button or consider following my podcast, Art Food, on Apple Podcasts. I promise you, that is one thing that I do plan to get back into. I clearly love talking, right? And I have to cut out a lot of ideas for the video format to flow nicely. You may even want to consider enrolling in my Procreate course on my website at ergojosh.com. It's not only just about the basics of Procreate, but it's more about how to develop the professional skills and techniques that you'll need to elevate yourself as an independent artist, no matter what skill level that you're at. So regardless of how positive your experience on life is, the kind of growth that I experienced does not have to come at the cost of your mental health. And I want to share how to start reclaiming that for yourself starting today. It's time to recognize the ongoing shift towards finding meaning and balance in your life. Giant content platforms are like slaughterhouses that are made to siphon your creativity all the time. Except that if your meat happens to not be in season, you just get thrown in the trash. When I say the word perversion, what do you think of? It's probably something of a sexual nature, right? That's another clever distraction because its core meaning is actually much more profound than that. Perversion simply means to take something of great rarity and or intrinsic value and then thoughtlessly give it away for something common and petty, like money. That's what's happening with our art. All this fear mongering about AI art is just a distraction as well. It's simply the tip of the iceberg that has been lurking under the surface for over a decade now. As much as you can just reduce this video down to a simple rant on social media, I recognize that we have all played a significant role in creating the problem. We have given up our own individual sovereignty to others to control us, our work, our creativity, our passion, everything. And we've let them decide for us what is success and what isn't. But the good thing about being part of the problem is that it automatically makes you part of the solution. Prince was a legendary musician and he was often compared to Michael Jackson because of his seemingly infinite creative energy and talent. So I want to share a profound statement that he made in a televised interview in 1998. If you ask any artist, the music is a success upon creation. Mm -hmm. uh, when you give it to somebody like a Rolling Stone or a Vibe and they start um, critiquing it, then 
your perception changes. But that's looking through somebody else's eyes. So again, we, um, we gauge success based upon what we feel in our hearts. You know, uh, We've shut our minds off now. Two years after that, almost exactly 24 years ago, he would also go on to make a bold speech when he was named Artist of the Decade at the Soul Train Music Awards. He spoke about how if you take a contract, you're likely gonna get a minority share of the winnings and most won't do well at all. And while it's pretty clear he was talking about racial minority groups and hidden political economics within Hollywood, as well as the creative industry at large, to be honest, I believe he was speaking to a more general yet simultaneously more specific audience as well. I think he knew that there would come a time such as this where creators all over the world would need to remember who they are. He ended his speech with one simple request. Imagine what we'll all be like in our own game. This will be a difficult shift for all of us and most people will not join until others start and become successful and so they can become inspired to move and find their own path. A few days ago, I posted a question on my community page here on YouTube asking what you all thought about social media. And many of you chimed in, saying similar things about how you felt devalued and disconnected. Many of you are very well aware of the toll that it's having on your mind. You mentioned the transient nature of posts, fear of being unfairly scraped by AI platforms, and the lack of community feedback. One of the most important issues presented was the limiting belief that social media is the only way to make it as an artist, which couldn't be further from the truth. And isn't it so ironic because social media was supposed to be social, right? I too advocated for people to hop onto the social platforms like Instagram after facing difficulty getting engagement on DeviantArt several years ago. It was one of many websites and online forums of various sizes back in the day where you could join a community and experience genuine heartfelt feedback from people all over the world who were just as passionate about art as you were. Actually, I want to stop and take a moment to pay respects to DeviantArt, by the way, because DeviantArt was a legend in and of itself. DeviantArt was one of the first websites, not just art websites, websites, period, to allow anyone with the means to post images on the internet back in the year 2000, when we called it the World Wide Web. Now, personally, I've always disliked politics, but isn't speaking on life and society part of our job description as artists? Why did it have to stop with the political cartoons of the newspaper days? If you think about it, newspapers, news, and TV networks were the grandfathers of social media. We thought we got freedom of speech with, you know, platforms like YouTube, but we just got tricked into doing things for the money again. We're now super policed and we can't say what we want. These days we're too scared to say anything because we want to stay relevant on the platform and avoid demonetization and cancellation. I'm really interested actually to see how this video does, to be quite honest, because it's quite sensational and dare I say this icky, egoic term, woke. I think us as visual artists should take some cues from the music industry. I'm still finding songs that seem like they're just leaving behind bits and pieces of the truth in their lyrics all the time. See if you can guess where these come from, and I'll list where they're from in the description. Freedom ain't a thing that comes cheap, but I'd rather pay the fee if I know I won't be burdened by these chains. I'm good now. Who's really bad? I choose me now. What's wrong with that? Pressure's rising fast as lightning. They can't stop it now. If you ain't talking realness, then just change the topic now. You see, capitalism is pretty great, but the excessive pressure to show never-ending markers of growth is killing all meaning in the world. Brands are pressured to show growth or lose support from investors and die. Everyone thinks that if they don't grow, they're just going to get replaced by another brand in two seconds. I'm really tired of everyone operating under the belief that there isn't enough here in the world. This stress just trickles down to everyone. It goes down to even the newbie artist who feels pressure to fit in with the trends and eventually disconnects themselves from their intuition, which is the source of all your creativity. And I guess it makes sense. It's no wonder we feel like we're always going to be left out in the cold. Without connection, you feel like you're just going to have to take from others all the time to survive, which breeds the idea of lack and scarcity. Pressure to grow and improve has bred so much toxicity and harm to our identity and self-worth. 
See, I'm not saying to abandon all logic and become wandering art nomads, right? But leaning too heavily on one side of anything gives way to destruction. We have two halves to our brain, right? We need to move with our hearts in sync with our minds. These concepts have been present for thousands of years. It's even clearly stated in the Bible that you can't serve two masters, right? Are you going to prioritize yourself or are you going to prioritize what others want from you? I also want to mention that I talk about or reference the Bible a lot because as an American who is the child of parents who emigrated from a nation colonized, 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 that's interesting, by Europeans, you know a good deal about Christianity. If you have experience or background or belief in Hinduism, Islam, Judaism, or more, please feel free to share anything that you feel is relevant in the comments. Trying to fit in at the expense of who you are is a perfect recipe for shame, depression, isolation, and despair. It ends up becoming an endless vortex that takes an incredible amount of energy from a very powerful catalyst to escape. And I should know, I've been there more than once or twice in the past couple years alone. And even if you do survive the journey, it's still up to you to choose which direction you want to move in afterwards, or else get caught up again. I believe that the people who think that they're good at nothing have just been failed by the world around them. I think that what's happening is that you've simply disregarded anything about yourself that someone else said isn't valuable at an important time in your life. And trust me, I've wasted plenty of years hiding my intelligence and literally keeping quiet because I was judged and ridiculed for the way I speak in my most formative years non-stop by everyone around me. I slowly became obsessed with finding acceptance in the world without realizing that I disowned myself long ago. And to be honest, no one really wants to be around someone who hates themselves. It's regardless of if they're aware of it or not. When you are creating as you are, you need to do it loud and clear. You can never be alone because you will signal to others who also like, need, and support your art, and they will come. I know it's scary, but take your time. I will be joining you in this journey myself because I'm really just getting started. If you find that this seems too far-fetched or too idealistic, then that's fine, but I encourage you to try it anyways. If you want proof, then look around you with an open mind because you'll find that this is all part of just a fundamental concept that defines our universe. So let me break that down. When you share or create a new contrary idea, right? We call that polarizing. Polarity is what gives movement, power, and meaning to everything and nothing. For something to exist, its counterpart must also exist to define it. To know something is also to understand and know what it is not. Up doesn't exist without down. Nothing flows without polarity. Contrast is a critical art fundamental that draws our attention to different elements within an illustration or movie scene. You can think of visual hierarchy and composition as the effective distribution of different elements to use contrast to tell a narrative or convey emotion. How do you define left? It's just the opposite of right. If the battery stays too full or too empty for too long, it degrades faster. You breathe by contracting your diaphragm to create a vacuum in your lungs that pulls in air from the outside of your body. How can you define life without death and nothingness? light without darkness. If you just try to fit in all the time, you'll become stagnant. You won't get any traction online or in real life by just sitting there. When a voiceover artist or audio engineer builds a studio, standing waves are one of the first things that they try to eliminate to ensure good quality sound recordings. Have you noticed that cats know by instinct that standing water is more likely to be unhealthy from bacteria and parasites compared to flowing water? If you stop being physically active, your health will decline. Everybody knows that, right? The evidence is clearly hardwired into reality everywhere you look. So why not apply it to your creations? The pain of abandonment is healed by turning your attention towards self and proving to yourself that you will not abandon yourself no matter what happens. So no matter what, don't lose sight of why you create. Don't let a day go by that you don't let loose. And even if no one else sees it, you're seeing it. Check out a few creators here on YouTube like Life of Riza, YC Imaging, Josh Art, Gox Art, or Natalie Lynn. They are blowing up by just being themselves. People are getting really tired of hearing nonstop about unrelatable, perfect superhero stories. 
Now, I am not telling you to go copy and plagiarize these people. Please do not do that. But what I am encouraging you to do is to be inspired by them. Maybe steal little bits and pieces here and there. And go do your thing. That's how I built my personality. And look at me now. I'm famous. <laughs> I'm famous, mom. I'm famous on YouTube. So, but what are you waiting for, you know? Nothing is new. Only different. It's everywhere. It's inevitable. People are rising up now. And they are sharing new and challenging ideas every single day. Again, I'm not the first to share these ideas and nor will I be the last, but I challenge you and I dare you to go out there and live life to the fullest without anyone else's permission. Every single time I upload a video, YouTube silently threatens me that I'm going to be devalued if it contains any ideas that might rock the boat and I have to click a button that says, yes, I'm going to be a good creator and I'm not going to do anything bad that's going to make ad partners not want to pay for my video. I'm choosing to move away from the invisible golden handcuffs of content creation and deciding to go the direction that I want to go. It's not just for my own ego, but I'd rather go to bed every night knowing that I help someone out there rather than the fact that I've secured the bag. I refuse to fall in place in a path that has been laid before me by those who no longer or probably never even had my best interests in mind, and neither should you. So test what I've said, go try it out for yourself, and watch some of the other creators I mentioned. Debate it and discuss it because we need your input as well. You were born original already by default. You just need to realign with that. You are not worthless and neither is your artwork. You are not disposable. And no matter who or what has discarded you or your work in the past, it has value regardless. And you need to know that. It's time to break free from the shackles of conformity and embrace the essence of true creativity. This is a war and it's not going to be easy at first. Every single day, you're going to have to remind yourself to persist through the darkness, to wade through that thick swamp of doubt, fear, and shame. You're going to have to fight, fight, fight. Do not let temporary situations define your reason for being or creating. You need to understand the impact that you alone can have on this planet. It's no joke. Look at all the incredible inventions that have come because of one person. Evolution did not spend millions and billions of years refining the human genome just for us to stop experiencing new things. You weren't extremely carefully and wonderfully made just so you could sit around waiting and not rocking the boat so that you can be whisked away to a better place because you've been good. Your ancestors did not sacrifice, struggle, and fight for better opportunities so you could waste it living in fear and doubt, complaining that someone else is controlling you. You are here for a reason, and that reason is in the definition of who you are. No one else can tell you what it is, and you're not going to find out by trying to fit in with everyone. You have a purpose here, to experience and expand via the unique perspective that is your name here. There is something greater that experiences through you. You were very carefully designed, and you were the result of thousands of generations of ancestors that came before you. You were not just the lucky sperm that made it to the egg. When I stopped trying to fit in, I got everything I was looking for. Even something as simple as a little doodle that you made on the bus ride home from school has value in the eyes of the infinite cosmos, no matter what anyone else says about it. So keep drawing, stay positive, and also, you know what? What's wrong with being negative? So stay balanced, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Peace. Got a little, got a little preachy there. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Okay. Boy, oh boy. <laughs>